And I don't know what else to say. Hopefully, my guest will have an idea. Please welcome Bill O'Reilly. <laughs> Bill, thanks for being here. Bill, thanks for being here. Sure. Um, we booked you over a month ago, and I know you guys are busy over at the Real News, and uh, so I appreciate you still being here tonight. Um, you pay attention to everything that happens after a big news story happens, especially after a national tragedy like this one. What have you heard out there in the first 24 to 36 hours that sounds like a, a good response to you? If it was President O'Reilly, yeah. who would you be listening to, and, and what would you do? Well, first of all, it, it wasn't a tragedy in the sense that, uh, as one of our contributors said, it wasn't like an Amtrak train derailing. This is a basic uh, war that we're in. And I look at uh, the news from not only a contemporary point of view, but a historical point of view. So I think that in times like these, that Americans, after um, the appropriate outpouring of grief, which we've had, and then the appropriate um, care for the families involved, which they're raising millions of dollars now. Actually, it was a line to give blood eight hours long in Orlando today. And all of that is appropriate. Then you have to basically step back and say, all right, how do we solve this problem? Because it's an ongoing problem. It's a war. These people, these Islamic jih uh, jihadists have declared war in the United States and the West. Mm -hmm. That's what they've done. Mm -hmm. Now, they don't represent most of the Muslim world, mm -hmm. but there's enough of them to cause the world pain on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. So that's the problem. Well, that, you have framed the problem in that way, right. but it can be looked at in a different way. You can also say the problem is easy access to high capacity, rapid firing weaponry. That's another way to frame the problem. And they don't have to. It doesn't have to be either or. As the president said uh, in, in his address, they do not have to be either or. Can deal with they can, both they can both be problems. Right. Would you accept that those can both be part of the problem here? Um, I don't think the problem is defined uh, nearly at the jihadist level by the American gun experience. I, I but, don't. You know, I tens don't. of thousands of people are killed with guns. Right. And uh, having nothing to do with uh, jihadis or Islamic extremists, if you like to say that. You know, Just Chicago, in crimes and in mass murders that have nothing to do with radical ideologies. So this is someone who has a radical ideology and is motivated perhaps uh, by a, a schiz schizophrenic interest in believing he's part of something bigger, perhaps by responding to a call from ISIS to kill people in the United States. But then he w had the access to the weapon right. to do the deed. So it's got to it's got to both be part of the problem, yeah, okay. don't you think? But you have to step back and you have to look at solutions to problems rather than lamenting problems that cannot be solved. But if you don't agree on what the problem is, you can never agree on a solution. Okay, but <laughs> it's my job as a news analyst to find a solution to the problem, and the solution is not some kind of federal gun control mm -hmm. at a level of. Um, Taking listen, guns to what he, away. listen to what he has to say, please. Chicago is the toughest gun laws in the country. Chicago is the highest murder rate of any murder American city in the country. Why? Because you cannot patrol 24 7 criminals and terrorists who have access to guns. Mm -hmm. so and there those are hundreds guns come from mostly outside of Chicago well, because there are, hundreds, there are not yes, the there federal are hundreds laws of that millions of guns on the streets of New York. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, not in New York. Of hundreds of millions of guns on the streets of America right now, mm -hmm. okay? Legal guns. Mm -hmm. And that's not gonna change because we have the Second Amendment protections. And our history is one of that we use weapons not only to get our freedom mm -hmm. from Great Britain, but to forge the West and where there wasn't any uh, control of the law. Now, Australia is the best example. Australia had 20 years ago, I think it was this week, a, a horrific almost like Orlando, I think it was mm -hmm. 35 people in Tasmania killed mm -hmm. with an automatic weapon, and they banned all automatic weapons mm -hmm. and most handguns. Mm -hmm. Now, Australia... They reduced the number of weapons in the country by about half. Need more than that. And if you carry uh, a concealed weapon or a pistol in Australia, 14 years in prison. So we can learn from Australia. 
Mm -hmm. um, the gun murder rate in the 20 years has fallen 72% in Australia. Okay, in the United States, roughly over the same period of time, the murder rate with guns has fallen 30%, and the shootings have fallen 60%. Nobody knows that, okay? Our gun problem is going down here, not up. Why? Now, this is the key to solving the gun problem. Why is that there have been mandatory federal sentences handed out to violent offenders, including drug gangsters? Those mandatory sentences are now under fire from the left. They don't like them. Okay. But they took off the streets most of the real big-time bad criminals and put them away. So my solution to the gun problem is this. Number one, Congress debates which guns are allowed. You can't have a bazooka. You can't have hand grenades. No, mm -hmm. you can't. So it's perfectly legitimate for Congress then to say, what kind of rifles mm -hmm. should people be able to buy? So a President O'Reilly would be open to the idea Absolutely. that AR-15 so you, like weapons or AK-47s could be limited. bring it out and say, we believe these weapons should not be sold in the United States, no matter what the states say, because federal law always takes precedent. All right? And debate it and define it. 1996, I believe, mm -hmm. they did mm -hmm. stop uh, many of the high tech uh, rifles. They banned them, mm -hmm. and that lapsed. Mm -hmm. We should look at that. All right. right? Because so let, let's get back to Islamic terrorism. Well, well, I wanted well, you to address the idea of guns, guns. Because your crew out here is applauding stuff they shouldn't be applauding. What we need to do here is every crime, every single crime committed with a gun in this country, whether it's Orlando terrorism, or whether it's Chicago and the inner city drug gangs. Every crime is then a federal crime, all right? No more local, no more state. It's a federal crime. Well, don't you and think there would be an outcry from people who believe uh, in states' rights? Outcry doesn't concern me, all right? <laughs> then when but there's an outcry over passes, the Second Amendment, and that does concern yeah, you. No, I don't care. You if don't you care can, about the Second Amendment? I do, but the Second Amendment doesn't give anybody a right to commit a crime with a gun. I, okay, I, okay. I, I understand okay? that. Do you have anybody a right? No. So all federal, all gun crimes, every gun crime, including selling illegal guns, is a federal crime with mandatories, with mandatories. So if you rob a 7-Eleven with a gun, not only are you convicted of the robbery of the 7-Eleven, which is a local beef, but you get 10 years in a federal penitentiary. Mm -hmm. On top of that, mm -hmm. that takes away... So mandatory that, sentencing. I, just, right. I know we've got to get all these to talk crimes. about. Mandatory sentencing, you believe that you, that some limiting of uh, access to high capacity and uh, semi-automatic weaponry is right. a reasonable thing for right. Congress to, right. to... Congress passes that pass law that. All right. and then federalizes the gun crime. Okay, let's get back to the specific specificity of the Orlando attack. What do you think the proper response is to stop something like this, which is not uh, uh, fall under the category of the kind of crimes you were talking about? It's impossible. Okay. So, it's impossible. That's a hopeless you're thing. You're always going to gonna have your Timothy McVeigh's. You're always going to have your Boston Massacre mm -hmm. bombers, your San Bernardino killers. Mm -hmm. Can't. It's throughout history. If you look at it, uh, from but Jack the Ripper per, if to this to person Lawrence who had been interviewed twice by the FBI, right. and the FBI has something to answer for for that. If this person had been interviewed twice by the FBI, can still get access to automatic weapons. He had broken a law. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, Why can we keep him off of a flight? He wasn't on the no-fly list, but people who the, are under investigation can be kept off of flights, the private but they can get the guns. Because the private airlines, they are the ones keeping them off the flight. No, there's okay? a federal no-fly list. People can and kick goes, off people off the plane goes under into, their own volition they can, but the feds create the no-fly list. If I'm the president of JetBlue, mm -hmm. and I say to the federal government, I'm going to let anybody I want on this plane, mm -hmm. they can't do anything to me. Okay. Has any airline ha done that? No, of course not. Okay. Why would they do it? So why would you argue why would that? They, I wouldn't argue it. I'm just but saying that you, you can't impose on the FBI, and you, I don't think you can blame them either. I think this, the Bureau does a very, very good job. You can't say, look, this terrorist, Omar, all right, you had him. You knew Mateen was a bad guy, but they didn't have him in the commission of a crime. So what can you do? You can't just detain him unless... Congress declares war against the Islamic Jihad, which I say on my program should happen. Okay, I want to talk more about that in just one Absolutely. moment. Uh, we'll be right back with more Bill O'Reilly.